so we've got a no heat call here, and it's not wanting to run. So let's uh, go ahead and reset the power again. Let's see. Maybe it's that one. anything in there so it's probably in the crossover okay so I took some screws out on the side one out of the top Let's go ahead and get this out of there looks like there's a little something in the crossovers there we'll go ahead and run some a little something through there to clean that out and wire brush. Just basically clean that thing out. I don't have my tripod with me. Okay, so we got it all washed out and we went ahead and blew through them and then wiped them off with a paper towel. So the crossover should be really clean now. Uh, basically like we've done so far is we've checked the orifices here and then uh, we'll go ahead and wipe some of this other stuff out. It could have been any of this stuff here, possibly could have maybe done it, who knows. But we'll go ahead and get a little of that out because it's very hard to get out of there when those burners are in place. Not as creative as Linux is on theirs. Clean the flame sensor up and then kind of made sure the igniter was good too. Just basically using the right angle tool there. I got a new one here. It's a little bit smaller than my old one, so it really comes in handy. All right, so we got her back together. Tighten everything up. Let's see what it does. Characteristics can change once the cover's on. So let's go ahead and get this back together here. Get her all sealed up, let those burners cool down for a minute. Alright, so we got it back on, gas is on. Let's watch and see what it does here. Make sure it crosses over.
pretty good. Let's do her again. Make certain this thing starts over. But uh, I've had them act differently when they are uh, cold versus when they're hot. Especially on LP gas. LP gas is real bad about it. Everything's working like it should. I mean, looks as smooth as can be consider, uh, considered for the ring. Everything is wide open, and uh, I cleaned out the crossovers in between there, and then rinsed it out with water for any of the little fuss bunnies that might have been in there. All right, so I went ahead and took the condensate line here out and blew through it, made sure it's clear. That's one of the other real common things is a plugged up condensate trap. They really did not make this thing friendly. And then add somebody that glues the trap in there like that really doesn't make it serviceable at all. So I need both hands to get to that. That's kind of ridiculous back there. two-stage gas valve and draft motor. So it starts off a little bit higher and then drops down. So I say we're probably good. Looks like we got a good flame signal. So furnace is uh, 2010 so it's right at a uh, 10 years old area so it's not a spring chicken but uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Heat exchanger looks fine when we looked at it. Does have a humidifier up there? It looks like that's set up. The ballpark, and uh, seems like we're good to go. Um, other than that, concrete clean. Got the burners cleaned. Check the heat exchanger. Clean flame sensor and igniter, and uh, that was the only issue we had. All right, guys, that's going to wrap that video up there. That's a pretty simple call. Uh, one of the main things I wanted to make sure in this video here I did was uh, check the crossovers really well and make sure it fired correctly after I was done. I've had times in the past, uh, depending on the type of uh, gas that it's running on, whether it be natural versus propane, uh, sometimes once the burners get warm, the metal expands and it allows more gas in there and sometimes it doesn't light off very smoothly. So you gotta be really careful if you're having one of those weird oddities where it's not wanting to light off smoothly that you check it while it's cool versus when it's warm. You may think that you've got it figured out and everything's good to go. You leave, they shut it off, say they're using it for uh, a garage or something like that. They come back out the next day or whenever uh, that it's now cooled down and it lights off really rough and you know uh, backfires basically the flames roll out whatever the case uh, a lot of times that happens more when the burners have done wore out and everything else um, so that was uh, one of the things i wanted to do was make sure that it fired uh, correctly after i was done uh, those burners definitely were a pain in the butt to get out you had to take uh, the screws out along the corners i know they just really don't make those particular ones uh, very easy to service um, then and while I was there, I went ahead and cleaned out the condensate trap. That's one, probably one of my number one things that I run into quite often. And then, as always, clean the flame sensor and make sure the spark igniter is fine, you know, that there's no crack in the porcelain, there's no burnt wires, that the fan turns on, that the fan motor uh, is clean on the end, that the fan blades are clean, all the normal stuff that you should be doing during your uh, PM services and stuff like that. Uh, so that way you don't have a call back later. So it just, it, you know, as much as sometimes we hate doing PMs, if you're smart and you don't want to go back, you're going to go through and check all those things and uh, take care of them while you're there. You know, went ahead and checked the filter, uh, made sure the panel was uh, properly labeled inside the breaker box. Uh, at first I thought it was the bottom one. Then they put in that uh, piggyback breaker and then I found out which one it was. It took a little bit to find that because they only had it labeled as one single breaker prior to. When I washed out the burners, uh, I always ask the customer, uh, is it all right to clean it out in the sink or do you have a particular place you want me to wash this out? Uh, I'd like to wash these out. Hey, where, where would you like me to do this at? Is the sink okay? Always make sure you ask the customer where you want to, where they want you to do it at because you don't want to do it, you know, obviously if they got dishes in there, you don't want to scratch up their counters. 
Um, you know, this particular customer said, yeah, that was fine. Uh, we were in the middle of winter, so otherwise I'd normally go outside and do it at the uh, spigot outside. Sometimes they have a utility sink, which would be probably the best place to do it at. That way you aren't scratching anything up and getting any dirt and stuff around. Um, you know, if the burners look like they might need replaced, maybe that's something you want to talk to them about. Make sure that those, uh, you know, are addressed while you're there. Uh, thing I've always said in the past is, is always put it in the customer's uh, ballpark to let them decide what they want to do. And then always mark it down on your paperwork that you offered this, 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 and that. And then if those things don't work, then it's not a callback because you offered those as solutions and the customer may or may not have chose to do it. So uh, always just be honest and upfront with them and let them know what's going on. And, uh, you know, you'll always be further ahead that way. I appreciate you guys taking the time to check out the video. Uh, it was a kind of a simple one, but, uh, you know, this time of the year is when uh, we don't have a lot of things going on. So I'm kind of going through the scrap bins here and trying to find what I've got to put together and then put them out there so that at least it's usable, uh, useful content, hopefully to some of the newer guys uh, that are out there. And uh, so that's what we're doing. Don't forget, we go live on Sunday evenings, 830 Eastern time right here on this channel. Uh, a lot of times I have the wife on here with me and we just do chit chats with the uh, normal viewers that are on here, answering questions you might have over the videos and uh, just kind of hang out and get to know each other and stuff like that. So uh, once again, as always guys, thanks for stopping in. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, you know what to do. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.